Friends Podcast. Okay, here we are once again. It is July the 29th, 2019. This is Clyde Daniel, and you're listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, Episode 7. And I'm here with Diane and Constance. Hello, Diane and Constance. Hi, hello. this is Diane Hahn. How are, hello, everyone. <laughs> this is Gustus Brosson. Hello. All right. Now, the recommended video is a continuation from uh, last week's discussion. I got really excited uh, about the uh, Seth and Bauman's recommendation for using uh, the LinkedIn social media service. So, so I investigated it, and then I also found a... Uh, Sergio Gomez, his breakfast with Sergio, and he he gave five tips for utilizing LinkedIn, which are really outstanding. So that's what we're going to uh, talk about tonight. We will play the first clip. So here is the first one. He talks about uh, updating your profile. Now, what I want to do... Can you guys hear that? First advice I want to give you... Yes. Is if you're on LinkedIn, is you gotta go back and check out your profile. You gotta really pay attention to your profile and make sure that you have a strong profile. Make sure that your photograph is a nice picture, ideally of you. So LinkedIn is about people, so you wanna see the, the person versus you know on Instagram you may have a picture of your art or something else. I think in LinkedIn you should have a headshot, you should have a picture of you because it, it is again a professional platform where professionals kind of connect. So having a visual of of who you are, I think, is very important on LinkedIn. And I see many artists who are treating uh, LinkedIn the same way they use Facebook or Instagram, and I think it, you should treat it differently. So have a strong profile. In, in LinkedIn, you have, you know, you're kind of like one-liner where you say who you are, you know, I'm an artist or creative or whatever, you know, so it's, it's a very short little one-liner statement of who you are, what you do. And then you have an opportunity to write a more extensive bio, which is pretty cool. You know, you want to make sure that you write a nice bio. What I don't recommend is just copy and paste the one that you have on your website. Again, kind of adjust it a little bit, make it more personal. I think in LinkedIn, you know, you have the opportunity also to be professional, but at the same time be personal. So if you look at my LinkedIn profile, you will see that my bio is actually more personal. You know, it's, it's written as myself. I know Sergio Gomez was born, about that. I actually uh, write it in the first person. And I find that people kind of connect with me a lot easier that way, but it's still keeping it very professional. You want to have also then uh, your experience, anything, all the experience that you have had as an artist, you should be listing it there. You can also list important exhibitions as experience. Again, things of that nature, uh, you want to make sure you have a very strong profile, and that will help you to make better connections uh, in the platform. Okay, so Sergio, you know, he, he has some outstanding tips. It's just sometimes you have to get you, you have to get used to his accent, right? <laughs> I, I think Diane and I we've talked about that before. He, he, just you have to listen to him real closely. Yeah. So, any any thoughts about that? Oh. oh. Yeah, um, I haven't been to update anything this week um, because of the the eye surgery thing. But um, yeah, I need to go and and check everything over. I had done all of that earlier, but I need to go and update probably my photograph and check to make sure that the everything's professional looking and maybe change things to start including the artwork also along with the jewelry jewelry end of it since I'm getting back into doing artwork again. So Diane. have them include both. Yeah, I need to do the same thing. I, I set it up years ago and I haven't 
probably haven't even been in it other than this week when you sent me a friend <laughs> sent me a friend request, but um, or a follower request, whatever they call it in there. Um, I haven't really been in it in a few years, probably. So I, yeah, I need to go and update things. Yeah, I. Whenever I got all excited, yeah, after last week, I went and looked at my uh, LinkedIn. First of all, I had to, I had to, I even forgot my password, so I had to look that up. And once I got onto it, oh, I was only on there uh, the last time it was like 2014, and then I and I went to it looking for work because I had a thing about again our previous jobs, but nothing, you know, about my art or any of this that I've been doing. So I had to figure out how to how to edit the profile. It's not real clear how to edit that profile. It took me a little while, you know, to, to change change the art and the image, you know, and then put the bio in like what uh, Sergio talked about. But I got it uh, up to snuff. It, I still need to do some more and, uh, you know, make it a little bit cleaner. But at least it's, uh, it's, it's a decent start. Well, that's yeah, uh, well, before it was all like business to bu you know, like business stuff, like um, people looking for work or, you know, business to business kind of stuff. And it wasn't really um, geared so much towards creatives, I guess. It was more of professional business kind of. Place. Yeah, exactly. And I've, yeah, I I've seen the difference in, in uh, LinkedIn. And I love it now. They, okay, I, I'm on Twitter. And, of course, I'm on Facebook. LinkedIn has has come for me personally, just experimenting and playing around with it and exploring this last week. It has two of the features that I love the most on Facebook: uh, the the interaction capability and the groups. And then it has also the feature I like with Twitter: the connection capability. The ability to be able to to find people and con and connect with people uh, and you know Facebook they call them followers same way with with uh, Twitter you know and on LinkedIn they call them connections but it's the same thing you know the uh, connecting with uh, with other other people and uh, LinkedIn has made it very easy we're going to get into that he he talks a little bit about that and, and I'll expand that how I uh, went from only having three connections up to, I think I'm currently at like a 219. And I explained how it happened. It's so easy. It's incredibly easy. And I got really excited. <laughs> okay, let's let's listen to the next the next segment. He talks about creating a welcome message, which I hadn't done. And it's a, it's a good idea, you know, what, the way he describes it. Number two that you want to do is uh, you want to message new connection. This is something a lot of people do as an artist, it's okay to do it and uh, it, within the LinkedIn platform. It's not really a great idea, but it's also many times expected. You know, when you get a new connection, uh, you can send them a quick message. Hey, very nice, thank you for connecting with me. Um, I'm an artist based in Chicago. Uh, I do paintings, uh, drawings, whatever, and my work's about cycles of life. Here's a link to my website, you wanna check it out. Uh, or keep an eye on the things that I post here on LinkedIn. You know, make it short, make it concise, to the point, and uh, don't, don't make it a very long one, because people don't like to read, you know, long, welcome, uh, quick messages. But, you know, you can have something that you can save it uh, right, out of the, uh, right out of your phone or your computer, and you can just copy and paste it next time you have a connection. And it's a good way to kind of introduce yourself to others. And that's, that's pretty straightforward. I haven't done that yet. In fact, I didn't even realize you could you could do it until after I listened to his uh, his video. I said, "Oh darn, I got to go back and and create that." You know, it, it's an automatic feature. Yeah, you create a short message, and then whenever every time you connect with somebody, it automatically sends it sends it to them. Now, this next tip is tip number three is a really of LinkedIn, the real power of LinkedIn. So let's play it, and then I then we'll talk about it. Uh, number three, uh, strategy number three on LinkedIn, is, uh, which is very powerful, I found over the years, is use the recommended connections. LinkedIn will give mm -hmm. you recommended connections. There's a lot of people that you don't know, you have no idea who they are, 
And as you start getting more connections and you're starting to look for certain type of people, LinkedIn is going to be smart enough to also start uh, giving you recommendations. That's where you can find a lot of people working in museums, people working in galleries, people working in other uh, art organizations and things like that that you have no idea they existed. And just send them a connection. All you have to do uh, in your LinkedIn platform when you are in the home page as you arrive, you can look at recommended connections and just click connect, connect, connect. Go through them, see the ones that really are people that you want to connect with. Once in a while, it throws something way off, um, you know, because it might be somebody that you went with in high school or somebody you went with, uh, you know, in college. It might not be really a connection you want. You know, you're looking for the ones that pertain to you as an artist, so you can skip those. And slowly, the system, the platform, you know, is smart enough that it's going to start giving you better recommendations. The one that I use all the time, and it always gives me good recommendations over time. I have learned a lot about the, the connections that I'm looking for on LinkedIn, and uh, I use it very, very much. Let me tell you my experience with the connection. I got so excited. <laughs> when I started to investigate this last week, like I said, I hadn't used the service since 2014. I only had like three connections on there. And I also, I had lists set it up for looking, you know, for work. And I had listed as a, as a sales associate in retail. So all the recommendations was all the local retail stores and, and, you know, and managers and assistant managers and whatever. And I'm playing, wait a minute, no, I just changed my profile. I'm an artist now. Where do I find the artist connections, you know? So I went to the search and I typed in art collectors and not a whole lot came up. I said, I wasn't that impressed. I was almost said, wait a minute, what's going on here? Then my feed, they just started, things started popping in my feed. And there was a, a, because I was an artist, I listed in my, I listed as a visual artist illustrator in my profile. Within a couple minutes, LinkedIn, LinkedIn started throwing up artists, pictures and paintings of artists in my feed. And then I saw a painting in the comments section, a individual who said he was a art collector wrote a comment about the painting. And so I clicked on his profile. Bingo. He had well over several thousand of his connections who were art collectors and museum directors and galleries. And so I started clicking. And then it's like one thing led to another. Click, click, click on the connection. Click, click, click. Now... In my automatic recommendations, LinkedIn recommends those kinds of people to me now. I, they still throw some retail people in there once every once in a while, but majority are whichever profile and, that I look at, then it throws in those recommendations afterwards. And that's mm -hmm, okay. That's how I found art collectors and and uh, I. Uh, art museums and gallery this owners. goes back to what um, Stephen Bauman was saying. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Because those are the people that you want to, you know, you, you want to connect with. You know. And that's how, I, that's how I found them. I didn't find them through doing the search. I just, you know. So, what you can do now, you two can also connect with, my, with people that I've <laughs> All you do is you look at my you, you look at the profile page, okay? When you click on the profile page, underneath the profile it 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 says connections and it gives a number of how many connections. You take your your, your mouse and you now I do this from the desktop computer, so on a on a uh, on the app it might work differently, but I know with the desktop computer, you hover over the connections and you click and that will show all of the people that's that they are connected with. And then you just select the ones that you, you know, that you want, and you just click connect, connect. Now, just because you connect, you click connect, or you've 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 asked, doesn't mean everybody has to accept. But a good percentage of them will, because what they do is they look and they see who you, who you're connected with. Oh, okay, so he's with this artist. Okay, or he's with this. Okay, he's been connected with this curator. He's been connected with this collector. Oh, and then nine times out of ten, they'll go ahead and they're they accept your invitation. And that's how you build. That's how you build your list. 
Is that making sense what I just said? Yeah. Yes. Some people have those lists um, private, though. Have you come across many of those? Not yet. No. But yeah, there are, I'm sure there are some that are private and hey, you know, so if I come across one, I just ignore them. I'll just keep on going. Uh, Twitter works the same way is you just, you, you click on who you want to follow and then they either accept, you know, an invitation gets sent to them to follow you and they either accept it or, or ignore it. But, the, but you can just go down a list, click with a mouse click and click, click. I mean, you can, you know, 20, 30 connections. You know, invitation can go out like instantly. Yeah, about half of them will probably will probably come back. And then you, and one thing that even whenever I uh, have uh, follow request on Facebook, I always look at their profile before I accept. You know, we've talked about that before. Where you get the. All right, now we're going to go on to the tip number four, where Sergio talks about the importance of uh, commenting and uh, groups. Next one, um, strategy number four, is you want to also take the time once in a while to comment on other people's posts, you know, check out what other people in your network are doing and also comment on what they're doing. Again, as your audience gets larger, your connections get larger, you have it difficult to connect with everybody, but you know, when you find something that uh, you find important or interesting, make sure that you also comment on that, connect with, with the person and that's how you can create connections and build relationships. That also, uh, in terms of connections, uh, LinkedIn has groups, so you can also look for groups uh, that you know interest you. You know, the of topics that interest you, and be part of that community if uh, you want to even make more connections and connect with more people within the platform. Okay, now that thing about the groups, <clears throat> I found several groups that are like art for artists, art collectors. And it's kind of like the way it is on Facebook. Uh, when you want to join a group, you have to ask to join. You put a request in. This is the way that, that LinkedIn does. I'm still waiting. I put the request in, it's a, I think it's Thursday. Thursday or early Friday morning. And I'm still waiting for approval, you know. So I don't know how often if these groups are real active. Maybe they're, maybe the ones I selected are not too active. And his aspect about commenting, that is another powerful option. As you develop your connections, then you start receiving uh, their postings in your feed. And you have like a main feed, like the way Facebook does. And then you can comment. And that's where the interaction starts taking place. And you start developing what Stefan Bauman talked about. You know, you don't say, hey, I got this painting for sale. No, you just, you... <laughs> Yeah, you have to develop a little bit of a relationship. You know, Paul Klein goes in about that when he talks about building relationships. You know, it's kind of like dating. You know, you don't go up and say, hey, I like your eyes. Let's go to bed. No, you don't do that. You develop develop a, uh, you know, a, a bit of a relationship, you know, and everything. <laughs> Caveman mentality doesn't work all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go with the last, the last tip which is another powerful resource that I didn't even know existed. I saw it, and I didn't know what it was. Now that I know what it is, I'm going to start utilizing it. Let's, see. Let's listen to the last and final tip. Number five, and the last one, is one that I love a lot on LinkedIn that you don't have in the other platforms, is the ability to create articles. You can create articles that go right into your profile. So you can make an article and the article stays in your profile and you can share that article with people in LinkedIn and even outside of LinkedIn, which is pretty awesome. So how you can do that so that you don't, you know, you can utilize what you're doing someone else. So if you have a blog in your, in your website, for example, when you write a blog, you can copy that information, go to LinkedIn, create a, just click the button on create a new article, paste it, put a couple pictures, put a link to your website and boom, you have now an article, you know, um, anytime that you, do, you do something like that, you know, you can create an article. Maybe you have a, a new exhibition and you have a press release. Boom, you can make it as an article. Put it there, put a couple of pictures. Boom. So anything that stays related, you know, uh, you can put it as an article. And what's nice is that over time you start building a number of articles and new connections that come in. They can find them, they can see them, you can share them with others. So that is a very powerful resource. On LinkedIn, whenever uh, on your 
main page, the home page, you know, a little box is there where it says, you know, write a post. Within that box, there's also a, a button called write an article. That's where you would do it at, okay? Now, when you write a post, it goes into your feed, but just like on Facebook and Instagram and everything else, it will scroll by. But when you write an article, it stays on your profile. So if people who click on your profile, they can also read your articles, kind of like you know, with your blog posting, you know? And so, so if, you, uh, if you write a blog, just copy and paste the blog entries onto your LinkedIn and you can start building these articles in your profile. This will help build a certain amount of credibility for your, uh, for your art. Any comments? Well, now I'm going to have to go check out my page and see what all I have written, <laughs> written in there. I know I've, I've written a lot of stuff on there. I just don't remember exactly how all I've gotten up, got it all filled out. So I have to go check it out again. What about, what about you, Diane? I don't know. I don't know anything about either. I can't, I can't remember. I haven't been on there in a while. I don't remember what I have on there. I know I was doing, using it when I was um, doing license and stuff. But I haven't been on there since then. <laughs> I can't hear you. Diane, we're not hearing you, Diane. You got to... Yeah. <laughs> Diane's been having technical problems with her new computer. First, uh, she didn't get her sound, and then she, then we had her good for a while. Then we lost her the connection. So all this, all these little uh, technical glitches, folks. I'll be editing out. That just want to let you know if you're not hearing much from Diane in this episode, it's because she's been having technical problems. There. <laughs> it's so frustrating. It is frustrating. I think we're about ready to wrap up. This is going to be a short, short episode, and it's predominantly just talking about. So we got some uh, some work to do, uh, folks, with uh, updating our LinkedIn and getting on LinkedIn. Yeah, another social media platform, but hey, it's uh, that's what this internet is about. It's uh, gaining exposure and uh, getting our work out there to the to the public, and we are just so lucky that it's available to us. Here in the 21st century, this is uh, such a great time to be an artist. So let's wrap up this episode, episode seven of the Artist Friends podcast, July 29th. This is Clyde J. Kale, and I've been here with Diane and Constance, and bye-bye, everybody. Bye, Diane. Bye, Constance. And Bye, everybody. And I'll say bye for Diane. She's waving. <laughs> yeah, that's <is> waving. <laughs> All right. Bye bye, everybody, and thanks for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists Diane Hunt and Constant Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www dianehuntstudio.com Constance Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.